Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson. This talk is about 10-year forecasting of the S&P 500. It is based on this book and you can click on the image or the link below the video. Consider the period 1978 to 2013. The average one-year return for the S&P 500 was 12.8% in this period, but it was very volatile and the standard deviation was over 17% for annual returns. And the greatest annual gain was over 70% and the greatest annual loss was almost 50%. So the question is if the historical average is a good estimate of future returns or perhaps we can use some financial information to make better estimates. Price to book ratio is defined as a share price divided by the book value. The book value is an accounting measure of shareholder value and it is calculated as assets minus liabilities. It is a capital originally supplied by the founding shareholders and the earnings retained through years of operation. Sales and earnings are generally related to assets. For example, we need more factories to make more products. And the assets are related to the equity because we need a stable capital structure without too much risk of bankruptcy. Future sales growth is wholly or partially funded by retained earnings. So the price to book ratio estimates the share price relative to future earning power. This only works for some companies, but the S&P 500 is highly diversified. So on average, we expect this to work. So let's look at a scatter plot of the price to book ratio versus one year returns of the S&P 500. So on the axis down here, we have the price to book ratio. And on the axis over here, we have the annualized return which is the price return of the S&P 500 and the dividend return. And then we fit a straight line and it tilts down a bit. So it suggests that as the price to book ratio gets higher, the annualized return gets lower. However, the fit is not very good. It has a so-called R squared value of 0.09. This means that the observation points are highly dispersed around the fit. What we have done here is that we have taken the data for this period 1978 to 2013. And for each day, we have looked up the price to book ratio and the return for the following year. And then we plot all these little dots or X's is one data pair. If we do that for investment periods of three years or six years, the fit becomes a little better. The R squared value is 0.3 and 0.52 respectively but it's still not that good. So let's look at 10 year investment periods. So we are again starting the period 1978 to 2013 and we take all starting dates in this period and we look up the price to book ratio and then we calculate the annualized return if we invest in the S&P 500 and reinvest the dividends for 10 years. And then we plot all the results in the scatter plot here and we fit a straight line. And this fits much better. Here we have a formula for the annualized return, which is 23.4% minus 4.9% multiplied by the price to book ratio. That is the formula for the straight line we see here. And it is a good linear fit with R squared 0.81 and the so-called p-value is very, very close to zero. So statistically, this means that there is some kind of relation between the price to book ratio and the annualized return over the next 10 years of the S&P 500. So let's give a few examples on estimating the 10 year returns for the S&P 500. On January 8, 1982, the price to book ratio was 1.09. So the estimated 10 year return is calculated using the formula from the previous slide. We plug in the price to book ratio and we get 18.1%. The actual 10 year return from this starting date and going 10 year forward was actually 17.6%. So our estimated 18.1% is quite good because the error is only minus a half percentage point. But let's look at another date. So we have January 12th, 1990, where the price to book ratio was 2.31. And we estimate the 10 year return using the same formula as before, and we plug in the price to book ratio. So we get 12.1%. However, the actual return over the next 10 years was 18.3%.
because this was a time of a great bull market for the S&P 500. So our estimated 12.1% annualized return was quite bad. And the error was 6.2 percentage point. And over 10 years, it compounds to a substantial estimation error. So we have seen that the linear relation is not a perfect fit and the estimation errors can be quite large. The largest estimation errors were minus 5.9 percentage points and 6.7 percentage point in this S&P data for the period 1978 to 2013. The so-called residual standard error was 2.5% for this data. This error range should be taken into account when forecasting future returns. But there's no guarantee that future returns are even within these errors. So the conclusion is that the price to book ratio of the S&P 500 can be used to estimate its 10 year returns. But the estimation errors can be large, so it is only useful as a rough estimate. The talk was based on this book, which has rebalancing strategies that use the price to book ratio to allocate between the S&P 500 and US government bonds. You can click on the image or the link below the video.